Yes, we're back. Welcome to the neighborhood. Myself, Chucky Online, is in the building. Yeah. And we've got a great guest today. Yes, we do. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have uh, the man like Richard Thomas in the building. Yeah. Let's give him a round of applause. You'll give a little rundown of who he is, now what listen, he represents. On a, on a personal note, I must have known Rich for about a decade now. And I have to say, I mean, he's, he is, I, I can't even find the words really but he's he's an original like he's a real OG um in this management game and somebody that has seen this record business change time and time again you know um he's worked in this longer than I have and really seen uh really seen our world and our our mm -hmm. musical scene in terms of black music in this country from from before it was people could even contemplate really making a making a legitimate and professional living mm. out of this scene to like where it is now where it is like a absolutely thriving business you know and it's good because there's a lot of young people or a lot of my peers that you know we've had on this show or that might tune in or might listen but today we're we're gonna genuinely get a, a schooling from a man that has seen it from the start and um and yeah listen all around great guy and I'm telling you, we're in for a fantastic conversation today. So, Rich, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I feel quite flat. No. <laughs> it's a lovely intro. Well, thank you, Rich. I mean, look, let's be honest. I gave Rich a call about this a few weeks ago. <laughs> and you, or you spoke about the whole thing, like, on that phone call conversation. Well, we had, a long, we had a long chat, but it, the, the chat started with a no, <laughs> and, um, and it ended with a, uh, it's still a no, but I'll have a think about it. Why and was it a no? <laughs> what, what happened? Why was it a no? Um, you know, I don't do this sort of promo stuff. Yeah. I, I, uh, I represent the artist. Right. Yeah. I represent the artist. I don't need to be acting up and I don't need to be that guy on the stage. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. don't need to be the one talking about it. I do it all behind the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, really. And, you know, the conversation that... And Richard said this to me on the phone and, you know, the <coughs> conversation that... I had and my angle was 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 what we do this show for, which mm -hmm. is about giving people an insight into the background of music and letting people know um, about the jobs behind, mm. like for want of a better analogy, the eleven players on the pitch. You know, because everybody can can see what it is to be an artist or whatever, but or even to maybe be a producer or someone that's more at the forefront. But act actually, um, really giving people in-depth, real first-hand information about what it is to, to work as a manager, to work as, you know, Alex Hoffman that we had last week running a, a, a huge media outlet or mm -hmm. to have a Hattie Collins who, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you, can go to, you can go to uni and study music business, but honestly, like... <laughs> can I just, can <laughs> I just ask, do you ever sit back and, like, take a little bit of time to think about everything that you have literally achieved and gone through? Uh... You know what? I, I I try not to, cause I try to look forward. Yeah. Um, I'd love to be able to sort of one day look back and go, yeah, actually, do you know what? Don't get me wrong. There's some. There's, there's been some moments. Of course, there's been some moments. There's been there's been some great moments in the last year. Mm. Um, but I don't try to kind of look back and go, oh, wasn't it great? Like, don't get all too sort of nostalgic and go, oh, you know, they were they were better times. Mm. It's just different times. I think this know. is why this is going to be good for you. Yeah. Because you're going to have to look back. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to get really, really into the, into the history and the journey and the time. Let's do right? this. So, all right. Where are you from, Mick? Um, from through South East London. Okay. Um, Bermondsey, East Dulwich. I've never moved further than eight miles in my life. <laughs> um, I'm one unfortunate few that have, you know, bred, born, and still doing it in my general postcode. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I travel the world and have travelled the world for, for what now feels like most of my career. Mm. Yeah. And there's nothing better than coming back to your ends. Yeah. Mm. And just going, ah, oh, you know what, this is where I feel comfortable. I know where the butchers is. I know where the bakery is. I know where this is. I know where my little waitrose is. Da 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 da. Mm. 
I'm, I'm good. He's yeah. on a Waitrose vibe now. I've been <laughs> on a Waitrose vibe for a lot. I'm, I'm a foodie. <laughs> so I've been on a, on, on a, on a, on a food vibe for a, 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 a more than a minute. And yeah. Yeah, I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard through the grapevine that you're a very good chef. Uh, I've heard that. Yeah, it is. Uh, I've heard that. People cookers, say. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. say. Yeah, I, I, uh, I stupidly, um, 2015, um, I turned 40. Okay. And um, I had a, how would you say, I had an epiphany. Mm. Something that I'd been dreaming about for a long while is, is, is kind of, understanding the real process behind being a chef yeah and i don't mean the tv thing i mean a chef in a working full-on kitchen and by the way this is a music program but <laughs> i'll keep it brief yeah um i want to sort of see how good my skills actually were yeah, yeah. i'm not going to go into the full details but um i spent 18 months um working in to free kitchens. Um, worked my way up from anyone who knows what these initials stand for. Um, I worked my way up from kitchen porter KP to a CDP, chef to party. There's some other things in between as well. Sous chef. So, I'm so, just so, throwing so, a word no, out there. I don't even know so, what it means. So, so, <laughs> after CDP, there's um, a demi sous chef, then sous chef, then head chef. Okay. Below me, there is commie and something else so kind of but in 18 months that kind of position you normally sort of get to in about generally two three years i managed to get there within nine months okay because i just got my head down didn't tell anyone what i do for a living oh yeah by the way let oh me, so let me oh wait so, so, so you was doing this in and amongst your managerial career yes okay this <laughs> might tie into something that i'm gonna ask All right. later on actually. i was okay. doing about 120 hours a week wow. i lost two stone yeah. My missus said after 18 months, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, yeah, I was just, you know, I was doing, and, and by the way, a part-time chef is 45 to 50 hours a week, part-time. That's crazy. Mad. Full-time chef, mm, 65, 70, plus 60 hours a week with Kane. Mm -mm. If you're on the road, mm. you know you're doing more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I was putting in some, <laughs> putting in some hours. <laughs> Shiesty was co-managed with me yeah. by someone else. Um, and that's how I connected with that person. Okay. Um, Kane, on the other hand, is a very, very different thing, which was I bought Boys Love Girls three times on vinyl. Why? Every time I just went, I've got to buy one. Like, this is just <laughs> like, this, this, is, this is that kind of sweet spot for me yeah. where... Boys love it. Girls want to be with him. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Like, Dizzy weren't like that. No. Mm. Like, I'm being honest. Dizzy wasn't that... Boys wanted to be like him. Girls are maybe not so, like... Like, mm. the, the, I know the whole sweet boy thing. Yeah. And, girls, like, girls you know, kind of liked his lyrics, but they didn't want to be with him. Yeah, like, yeah. Kane, Kane was unique in that era in a sense of, like... I'll tell you what it, he reminded me of. Yeah, You'll understand a little bit. Yeah. What, what, like, it's very different, but it's almost the same. So like in that garage era, when yeah. it was moving into grime and you had like, like So Solid were doing their thing, mm -hmm. you had like artists like Neutrino, artists like uh, Harvey. Romeo. Uh, Romeo. Mm, yeah. So these were people that were like, you like their lyrics because they were vibey. And but girls loved girls them. Girls loved them. But when it yeah. actually became, yep. when it actually really started to get to grime, Kane was the first one mm -hmm. that girls were like, like dudes loved Kane, but girls were like, yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? He was unique yeah. in that sense because, yeah, Dizzy was the guy, but girls he weren't really. He like, hates that bottle. He hates that sweet boy sort of thing. Yeah, but he wasn't, I think because he's like, he no, it's, trying like, it's about my lyrics. Though. Yeah, yeah, but he wasn't trying to be sweet though. No, no. I feel did. like Romeo, obviously, the name Romeo, you know, is he's trying mm, yeah, to, yeah, what, yeah. Cool. Well, I go on with that, Indeed, but yeah, yeah, like, he wasn't, I think it was more of a, like an effortless thing more than anything. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. anyway. So, um, you were. <laughs> so, Kane met him a few times. I think our first meeting was, which is, now we'll go down in history. Our, our, our first meeting spot was Canning Town McDonald's. So thanks lo to, lo Hattie, lo thanks lo to Hattie Collins, I've, I've 
I've got this in the notes. Oh, have you? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to know how three copies of uh, <laughs> Boys Love Girls ended up with a meeting in, in Cannon Town McDonald's, but yeah. Um, yeah, and I was, just, I was just like absolutely amazed by this kid, and he was a kid, and you're just going, you, you, you've, got, you've got that X factor. Yeah. You, you've got a star quality, yeah. you're, but you're not playing up to it. Yeah. You just ooze it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got a presence. You walk in a room and everyone's like, oh, women don't care how old they are up until the age of 60 would be like he's a good looking boy like literally but then you know he's a he's a he's a quite a considered quiet person generally mm. um and i think a lot of people at the beginning got that mixed up thinking that he was some you know rude or arrogant mm. or you know he, he's not he's just a, a he's quite a considered mm. person yeah um but yeah in them, in, in, in them first couple of days i think he was trying to suss out who i was yeah like really you think this can work I remember meeting him and I can't remember whether it was Dean Demon yeah mm. or it might have been Jermaine it was one one, one of the boys yeah I remember meeting up with him went to his ass and he still does this now he, he probably don't even realise he does it you know? so he'll it, it, be like oh, I've got some music to play here all right, cool, cool. What are you doing now? I'll come over. This is what he does now, right? But at that particular point, he's like, I'll oh, come to my house, his mum's house in East Ham. I'll play some music. Like, All right, cool. He sat there and just played me 17 tracks. <laughs> and I was like, how you been doing all this? He went, oh, you know, you know, go to Jamor or go to um, uh, Da Vinci. You know, he's done like, like there's, on that first album, there's, there's two Da Vinci records. Mm. But he made like seven, eight tracks with him. Mm. Yeah. You know, made a bunch of tracks with Jammer. Made a yeah. bunch of tracks with Terror. Yeah. You know, um, but what Kane wanted, and this ultimately is the, is, is the thing, is that Kane from, from the get-go was like, I want to make an album, no. Mm. Not really interested. Like, not, not, he's not interested in singles and, and, and that idea, but he's always been like transfixed with the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, Why? Why was that? I think so. He can communicate his story properly. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's it. I think when you get kind of, you know, the the, and and, and by the way, like er, everyone's got their own lane, and there's not mm. it, there's not one right way, one wrong way. I think it's just your way. Mm. But Kane from the get go, and Dizzy to be fair, right? It has always been about the body. Mm. Yeah. You know, they have moments in those bodies. But it's always been about the album, and 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 I and I don't believe a lot of other acts have had the consistency of making bodies mm -hmm. like Kane or Dizzy. Mm. I know we've been around for longer, and I guess we need to give certain people time. Mm -hmm. But there has been some people that have been around just as long, and they've not been so consistent. Mm. That's true. That's true. I think one thing to say for the newer generation is that, like, you know. Uh, whether it was, I don't know if people saw it as a blessing or a curse, but you know, you had to do your groundwork, you had to do the raves, you had to do the sets, you had to do three R's. Yeah. yeah, there you R go. Records, radio, raves. Yeah. yeah, and it's like you know, you had to do, you had to do a few years before mm -hmm. you graduated to the first team and got to put out an album. You know what I'm saying? And 100%. I think that being able to. Uh, be in a position where you know what reacts on radio you know what reacts to a live audience and you know what's working on vinyl or CD at that time. Mm -hmm. That influence in how you would approach making an album is, 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 is yeah, there's not a better foundation because now a lot of people, they've never even done a live show and, you know, they've put out a song and it gets big and now they're like, 10 million hits on YouTube. I better make uh, an EP or an album and within a year, you know, you're, you're just thrust into it all. And it, 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 yeah. it's, the thing is, there's no other way now because that's the internet is just yeah. like that. It's you know keyword development and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 and it's there. Yeah. yeah. You're there. All of a sudden, you, pu you put your record out. Yeah. Put your video out. It's done. Yeah. No right. time to develop. And, 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 and that, it, that, that is a little bit, a little bit sad. It is a little bit sad because it, you can't, you know, n no one can develop their, their stay show. And, and it's really unfair because that you pay yeah. for now. I guess the 
convenience at which we can all make music. <coughs> it's a lot more easy to make music. It's cheaper, mm-hmm. it's quicker, yep. uh, it's less limited. We are not, um, we're not sort of held. You still to- make cheap music. Say that again? Cheap music. I, I, I don't know what that word means. Oh, Can you have a chat with Kane? <laughs> <laughs> well, well but, but the last point, we're not, we're not here. I'm not here, like, for the fourth week in a row, getting a no from Rich at Fat Cat Records because yeah. you don't want to put my... You just don't like the cut of my yeah, exactly. jib. Sure. Sure. Do you know what I mean? It's like now you can just put records online and it's a very honest place. I was yeah. having a conversation on the phone here. There's different gatekeepers. There's different yeah, yeah. gatekeepers. But actually, but yeah. I genuinely believe like the internet is a pretty fair place. Like if you put a record out and it's good, mm. like it's going to rise to the top probably. But there's right. also the argument that a lot of it can also be quite distorted. Meaning? Okay, you can have something with 10 million hits. Okay, yeah, yeah. Does it mean it's good? Yeah. Uh, actually, no, I was going to say this. Mm. Doesn't mean say you can sell a show. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh yeah, because it's easy to click on yeah. a link, but yeah, is it? But it's hard to con- to get to convince your brethren to come and you bought two tickets and you go eat out and then travel. Or, halfway even, I, or even to buy still, even I, though it's cheap, even to buy. Yeah. I know we ain't the, the the big hitter online. Yeah. But I can tell you, last year I sold thirty one thousand tickets. Yeah. yeah. Right. Skept had bigger shows in terms of moments. Mm. Yeah. It'd be quite interesting to see what his figures are, right? Because he was around the world. Mm. Yeah. There's very few people other than us and Stormzy mm. that sold that many tickets in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Have a, like, in, in the last year. I yeah. want to get to that part of the story. <laughs> I want to get to that part of the story. But we got... So yeah, you got to marry, about, you got to marry these things. We, yeah, I, was, we, I had some things to say about that, but yeah. <laughs> we got, bring we bring got, that up again, because I want to talk yeah, about... Yeah, we will. We will talk about, we will talk about sort of uh, this current chapter of Kano mm, but mm. but you know I want to get into okay so you know you've left you've left the job you've handed in your resignation yep. you got a little payoff now yep. you're sitting in McDonald's getting a fillet of fish <laughs> and a large coke yep. um, big mac no cheese but yeah, yeah cool. big mac no cheese yep. fair enough so you've tried to get Kane signed already right and and, and, and I mean this is when you were me, not a manager what, yeah, when you were trying to A&R. sign him yes. as the A&R indeed right? yes so you're sitting there. What music exists at this point? As you start managing Kane, outside of Boys Love Girls, yeah. What exists? Okay. Um, did he? Did was there any? on 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 the on, they existed on the Home Sweet Home album? Hmm. Really, only how we live in. Mm-hmm. P's and Q's, obviously. What are we talking about? Like actually out there, or that he just no, made? I'm just saying played, what, what he played, has done. He plays you. Oh, okay. played, mate. All right, fair, fair. Um, how we live in P's and Q's, brown eyes, and something from Mikey. It might have been Home Sweet Home. Okay, so that is that interlude. There. Because I think he done sometimes a nine to five in that kind of that mm. period just after he played me all this stuff. I mm. think, I think, and I was like. Oh, that's a smash. Talking about P's and Q's. Yeah. And he's like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a that's a big club record. Mm. Big, big club record. Um, but yeah, that's, that, I think they're the ones that were the kind of the ones out of that batch. Mm. So when you, when you, you know, I mean, how, how long before, so you, from your first meeting at, at the McDonald's, was there a period of time where you lot were, for want of a better word, sort of dating? Or were you just straight in, you know what, I want you to be my manager, Rich, and Do you know what? crack on? I, I, I said to him, look, I think I can get you a deal very quickly. Mm. And it was quite perverse because obviously I was trying to sign him. Now I'm the one trying yeah. to get him the deal. Yeah. Um, but what we both liked, and it was great because we sat down, and, I, and, I, and, and, and he, he didn't understand about record labels. Yeah. As most artists don't actually no. understand. I said to him, look, Here's the list of labels. Here's the pros and cons for all of them, mm. right? Here's the people that I know, and really, I need to be getting in maybe a little bit higher to get the right kind of attention. Maybe I'm not talking, maybe I ain't got sort of a, a great access to someone. I don't know that sounds strange to say that, but at my point in my career, I didn't want to go and deal with a scout. Mm. I want to go and deal with Darkus. 
I want to go and deal with <coughs> the big boy. Richard Russell. Mm. You know, I want to go and deal with um, Nick Worthington, who we ended up actually signing mm -hmm. to. Um, but what we did was we sat down and we said, right, what do we like about what labels? And it's funny, we didn't like any of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> Other than 679 because of Mike Skinner. Okay. Mm. Big up Mike Skinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because he's, he, he, he's the one, it, it's strange because at times it's like, well, he's not Garage. I remember, I remember yeah, all the yeah, conversation, yeah. oh, he's doing something else, he's not, he's doing poetry or he's doing, yeah, he was you know, he's there. a wordsmith or he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's not, he's not part of us. Right. Not part of us. Right. Can't so, claim that. Yeah. But, Kane loved that. songwriting. Yeah. And, um, uh, has it come to this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it was. I can't remember the other, hey, that uh, song. I can't remember whether that was the first single off that album, off mm. that first album. Might have been the second one. Any, Kane's like, that's my shit. Mm. Like that's, that's that yeah, was that huge for us, man. Ridiculous. Seriously. Yeah. That was ridiculous. And it did. It permeated because it weren't. It, we, no one really wanted to take kind of any sort of ownership of it because like, well, he's kind of over there. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But then all of a sudden, yeah, Kane's like, no, he's he, he's that guy. So I went and spoke to Nick, went and spoke to Dan Stacy, and um, I said, look, make me an offer. We'll do the deal. Mm. Did you, at this point, because you're talking about doing this deal and that, yeah? yeah? But at the McDonald's, have you taken out the piece of paper and the pen and said, well, uh, at what point did that happen? Or did you go and get the deal first and then make him sign to you as an yeah. artist Yeah. first? I, I, I believe what we did... Between between us, we done both our deals simultaneously. Mm. Oh, okay. I didn't want to. What's the point of putting handcuffs on someone mm. that don't want to be handcuffed? Mm. Mm. Ultimately, it's not. That's that's that. I don't believe that that's the way to do business. Mm. Someone wants to work with you. Hence, why there's only two people out there that, in our world that's had manager artist relationship: me and Nick, Dizzy and Kane. Mm. Next person behind that is. Sam and Skepta. Mm. Kind of says a lot about our relationships. Mm. You know what it's like. I've seen a bunch of artists have 10 managers mm. in the time that mm. I've managed Kane. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Of course you have your ups and downs. Of course you have your little quarrels. You're like a married couple. I probably speak to him. I probably shouldn't say this. I probably speak to him more than my missus sometimes. Mm. Um, you kind of got to trust each other and and, and 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 you know that's that's ultimately where the the relationship lives and dies no, yeah no doubt sure. and like so you i mean yeah incredible times in that mcdonald's having a conversation going and meeting up listening to some music sorting out this deal you mentioned just before mm. which you didn't get into too much as um Wiley was involved in something or the other. Wiley, Wiley was massively instrumental. Because he was ultimately even, we, we consider was, him the godfather today, but even back then, he was, he was the guy. main, yeah, he's yeah. the main yeah. Don who was around Indeed. everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, talk, talk so, us through So, that. Will, like, I, I, I was trying to work with lots of different people in that point. The, the one that I was actually trying to work with the most, and I give a couple of remixes to, was Jammer. Mm. Um, Dealing with people like Wiley, I was trying to get him on remixes for Shiesty and yeah. trying to just, I, was, I just wanted to be a part of this. Yeah. I was just trying to get it tuned in. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing that happened was we was at a video shoot and Nick was obviously managing Dizzy and Wiley mm -hmm. at that point. And Wiley's like to Kane, you should let Richard manage you. Because I'm looked after with Diz by Nick. It'd be a nice little family. You guys, us, be nice and tight. We can all work together, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and that was Will going, yeah, work, work, work with Richard, work with Richard. And that's kind of the, kind of the, the red stamp mm. of approval mm. that I think maybe Kane Wait, was looking for. Right. That's what I got. It could have been something else. Yeah. Could have been something else. Yeah. But that was that felt like the 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 the, the final. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. But then, as I said, we did we did our deal and the record deal simultaneously. Yeah. And just said, look, let's just get them both wrapped up. Yeah, man. And and and, and now the work starts. So, because you touched on Mike Skinner before. Yeah. 
And I remember being like, I only obviously used to watch Channel U at those days, mm-hmm. which is now Channel AKA. Yep. And I remember the, you know, the Fit But You Know It remix and seeing Kane and Deneo on that. And it was Sovereign like- Sovereign and Tinchi. And Sovereign and Tinchi. Yep. And it was like, t- I mean, that was pre P's and Q's. Correct. And because first, I, first video. Yeah, because I remember thinking like Mike Skinner was obviously like quite, he was getting established at that time. And yeah. then yeah. for him to come over, obviously we were aware of him, but for him to come over and embrace these four new young mm-hmm. talents, mm-hmm. you know, um, all of who went on to do good things at varying stages, you know, yeah, yeah. but like that was, that was pretty, that was pretty big. But I remember Kane's verse on that and just like. It's huge. Like it was, a, it, was a, it was a massive moment for us and it kind yeah. of cemented actually Kane and Mike's relationships. Yeah, yeah. For, and, until now, you know, we've got a show with him next month in Ibiza. Skinner's like our, like a proper pal. Yeah. Mm. Um, but they have lots of similar ideas and they approach music in, I think, fairly similar ways. Mm. I think I think Skinner's a little bit more, um, probably a little bit more of a megalomaniac than than Kane. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, Sk- Skinner very much approached music in the similar kind of way. Crazy. What kind of obstacles were you going through though? I mean, it couldn't have all been just as smooth as that. Like, what what kind of obstacles were you faced at? Was um, this the first time that you kind of got into? I can give I give you. A, a, a bunch of scenarios where it weren't easy. Yeah. Let's talk about music to start off with, because I think that's the core of it. Dan Stacy was like, "Look, want to introduce some other producers." It's like, "All right, wicked." Mm. Skinner was already on our target list, but that was an easy one to bring in. <coughs> it's like, "Oh, got um, got this guy called Paul Etworth." He's done um, Rifles and he's done these other couple of bands, but he really, really, you know, wants to make sound work. Um, we've came much more on a, on a uh, kind of a big B, mm. kind of traditional hip hop vibe. Um, and for anyone who don't know, Paul Etworth has sold a lot of records. Yeah. Look his name up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's look his name up, <laughs> genuinely. This is when he didn't sell <laughs> he any. Had no w- Grammys. Any <laughs> he had no Grammys. He nah. had no. Yeah. No, nah, this is right, just cool. sheer getting a vibe. Yeah. Came in in the studio with him. Come out with I don't know why. Um, because I could kind of see what Dan was thinking A and R wise. I was like, well, I've got this guy that I think Kane will get a a great sort of connection with, um, and and he plays. That guy's Fraser Smith, mm. another mutual friend of mine and Ben's, um, and, and, and someone that I'd known for a, a very long time as a session musician. Yeah. Um, when I actually told Dan, that, Dan was like, oh, what, that white guy that plays guitar for Craig David? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, listen, <laughs> just give me a couple of sessions and I'll come up with the goods. Uh, Fraser might have I don't know when I don't know I don't know whether he did or he didn't but yeah. um, Typical Me was yeah. one of those early yeah. sessions yeah yeah he spoke he about, talked that. about that I've yeah. got that on camera right? I've got a load of stuff on camera that I will release one day because it will make for very interesting viewing yeah. I sat there in, in his studio flat, flat <laughs> <laughs> in Acton yeah. which is way out of mine and Kane's ends for yeah, both yeah, of us yeah. Sat down. Shout out to West London. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you look getting a nosebleed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we uh, we sat down and we, and we and you bashed out loads and loads of records. Yeah. Um, Signs and life were in them same couple yeah. of sessions. Yeah. Everything that they were doing, like Kane was jamming on a NPC, Fraser's giving it a couple of licks on a guitar. I'm making it all very simplistic here, but mm. there's obviously a lot more involved in it. But you're just watching these two just kind of just come together. Yeah. It's hilarious because after those sessions, me and Fraser, I don't want to say I was managing him, but I got him a couple of gigs, if you like, yeah. in terms of productions. And, and it's funny because Dan had just signed Plan B. Mm. And I was like, oh, we should get um, Fraser in for that. And he went, yeah, yeah, all right. After he heard the... The, the, the now he's record. in. You know, he's now in. he's not a he's, session guitarist. He's, exactly. he's the exactly. producer. He's on it. And, and actually, Fraser wrote with Ben or produced quite a few of that first album. Yeah. The first album that yeah. sold 25,000 
copies, not the one that sold a couple of million. Okay. <laughs> okay. The first album. Yeah. Yeah. So you put, you know, you put in the record. Can I just try that yeah, just yeah, very quickly? On. Nobody don't dance no more. That was my absolute jam. What and version? Was what the version? The second version. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Oh my goodness! I'll never forget the feeling of when that was I first a, heard that. That was an A-list record on Kiss. Crazy. Okay. It's getting thirty-five spins a week. Man. So this is where. When I look back and I see the things that you guys achieved on, on Home Sweet Home, you know, it was, it was uncharted waters. It was actually breaking new, new ground and new territory. And, you know, you sit there today and you say it was an A-list record getting 35 spins on Kiss. And that's, that's something that is inherent. You understand that now. But at that point, you know, we're coming from a place of actually just putting out records and actually the money's being made by the markup from the record store or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. you know, to the relationship between radio the chart your live show mm -hmm. and 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 getting a gold disc at the end yeah. of it all yeah. you know um because home sweet home obviously seminal album cult classic but let's have it right it sold numbers mm -hmm. it was a gold record yep. mm -hmm. um you had top 40 singles yep. which at that time again was Pretty with with very little with, mainstream I, radio. I'm sure, still in very little an play. Yeah, and I know I said that kiss thing. But remember, yeah. that's London. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, how is life changing, Rich? Because the gap at that time, mm. you know, now kids have access to their favorite artists quite directly, whether it's via social or Snapchat or whatever, mm -hmm. and they go to shows, and it's a thing now. But you know. We're talking, you know, a decade or more ago, you mm. know, Home Sweet Home came out, what, 05? 05. 05. Mm. Uh, you know, more than a decade ago, yep. you know, the transition from being an underground artist, even at a rave on the stage as an underground artist, you were still like, fucking hell, there's like my favourite act that I've, I, I've just come to see this one time. To then being on the front of magazines, doing big shows, touring internationally the rest how is life changing for you how is life changing for kane as a young man how are the goalposts moving like talk us through at, that at, at that at that time yeah because that's got to be a, that's got to be a pretty mad period and the only um, person to even nearly you know dizzy is the only person to, to yeah. tread that path before you so um it, it, it's a hard one because actually i was i was just actually living for the moment yeah so i'm not you know you asked a question earlier on about like oh do you not think about like what's going on mm. no because i'm worrying about tomorrow like and i always have i'm, I'm thinking what are we doing next kane and kane is like maybe that's why we get on because we're thinking okay what is next i guess the only sort of sad thing that i see at that time because it, it's funny the, the sad thing seemed to be you know one sad thing outweighs 10 great things yeah is that you see people change yeah. And I, and I saw a lot of people around Kane change. Yeah, yeah. Some people that I really kind of, you know, family, mm. you know, change. Why? Mm. Why would you say? I, 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 I think for most point, for, for most part rather, they just don't get what he's doing. Yeah. And not because he's kind of keeping them in the dark or, you know, it, it's just like he's got his own, he's got his own goal. He's going for it. When he gets out the other side, then maybe it can explain it to you. But because not everyone's along for the ride, <coughs> some people kind of, I don't know, they you know, start overthinking stuff. Mm. You know, jealousy pops in. Um, frustration pops in. Remember you know. his environment of where he grew up in that as well. In, in, yeah. Indeed, and it was. It was a, you know, it was a, it, it was a tough time. Yeah. He had lots of his friends as a part of the... The, the outfit, if you like, you know, mm. it's, it's mad because he talks about it in songs about, you know, in, I'm talking numerous songs. When we've gone out on the road, right, not earned a penny, mm. right, but he made sure every single person got a wage, everyone got their PDs, mm. everyone didn't spend a penny in their pocket, right, but Kane might have come out with a loss mm. because he's trying to do the right thing, but they can't always see that. Yeah. They can't always say it because you, you, one, you, you're not going to sit down and explain it to them because it's, it's going to sound patronising. Yeah. And, and two, it's like, well, you should half get it because someone's paying your wage. Mm. You know, who, 
and the only person who that is is Kane. So I think it was a he he, he got quite a, a, a rough end of the stick, and you kind of have to make the the call of you know what you're my mate, you're my mate, you're working, you're working. I I don't strongly believe that you know family and friends generally mix with with artists mm. personally. Um, I know other people have a different. Uh, idea about that and they go no I'm going to bring in this person and that person but it depends where you're trying to get to um, and, and, and my attitude is I don't care whether you're black white green yellow I really don't care are you the best person for the job mm. yeah. yeah male yeah. female I don't care do you dress up in girls clothes at the weekend I don't care mm. are you good at your job a lot of rappers are doing that right now, by the way. <laughs> yeah. do, you know, do you know what? I wasn't even <laughs> implying that. <laughs> but yeah, do you, do, you, do you know what? It's, I, 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 I think, you know what? Just, just I'm try and give that person a little bit of space at the beginning. Yeah. Because not everyone's going to be. Kane's got some great friends. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I don't do the industry thing. Mm. I don't. I've probably done it more more so when I was at the record label. Mm. But now, no, I kind of just, I've got my friends. Yeah. Mm. All my, most of my friends that I hang out with, all from Fat Cat days. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I said. I'll go back to this same period because I don't need no new friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really don't. Mm. I'm 42. Yeah. It's, I'm good. Did you I'm good. do the American stuff early? Because I know that there was like a period of time where you know, like now, yeah. there's a lot of artists now that are traveling yeah. all around America yeah. and whatnot. But at this early phase, I know Dizzy had traveled a lot Indeed. in the States. Yeah. Kane did some shows in America we did. as well. Did you? It was, ne it was never a focus. It was never a focus. Never, never. Oh. And, and, and the reason why is because it's a... It, America, even from an A&R perspective or from a manager perspective, is like the, 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 the golden goose, mm. right? If you break it, wicked. But there's a reality check. You are a rapper in a country full of rappers, rappers. with better marketing spends than you. Mm. Yeah. You can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that. Mm. It ain't never going to happen. So we just essentially, we said, look, if, it, if we get a little bite, then maybe we run with it. But if not, we're going to lose no sleep over it. Mm. Let's conquer here. Let's try and cement what we're doing here. Look at Europe like looking at the States. Yeah. Pick off you know, the Scandinavian countries where we do have good fan base. Pick off Germany where we do have a good fan base. Mm. Um, look at France. Look at Benelux. Look at uh, Benelux being Holland, Belgium, Luxembourg. Yeah. Um, you know, look at those territories and break Australia. them down. Australia. Australia. To be fair, we've... T <laughs> Kane's turned down about six offers in his whole career to go there. Has he been there? No. Was it the, he's the been distance? there with gorillas, okay, oh, but he's okay. never been there in his own right. Mm. And the reason why is because he's like, what's the point of going there to spend a load of money and sell no records? Mm. Mm. And that's the reality of it. You know, and what I mean by sell no records, I'm not being some kind of, you know, all doom and gloom, but, you know, what, what are we going to get back really from our investment? I think there's a very, very different climate change right now. Yeah. And in the last couple of years, it's, it has changed. To be fair, I'm, I'm quite upset that we actually recently, we had a, a tour on hold mm. and we've had to move it because of other things that have come into play. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, recently we've been having that conversation again and maybe you might see us there at the end of the year. Yeah, so, so nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you know, you break, you've, you've, you've broken new ground with, um, you know, with the first album and the first record. Yep. Um, and, you know, the next few years, just not even like boiling it down to Kano, but like mm. there's a there's a definite transition from like, oh, seven, eight, nine, yep. ten, probably. I, like, I, I'd say oh, seven to oh, nine was a, 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 a very unique period. Yeah. People might have seen it from the outside for us, maybe it's being quite cold. Yeah. But actually, in that period, after... London Town, yeah. which, by the way, we only dropped one single on and we parted company with 679. We actually parted company with Warners because they bought out the rest of 679 and they wanted to yeah. change the structure okay. of our deal. Because cool. they wanted to... Oh, by the way, 
we did part company because they want to change our deal to a 360. Mm-hmm. And we said no. Yeah. And people were like, what? I'm like, no, like, <laughs> I'm making some money over here. Have we so broken let's, down let's, yeah, so yeah, so let's yeah, break that, that down. So, yeah. you know, so you were on a traditional I was on a traditional deal. one album, advanced recording costs. And they're taking, you're taking your royalty. Correct. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so the premise of a 360 deal is as it, as it sounds, they want a piece of everything. everything. They want a piece of live. They yep. want a piece of merch. They yep. want a piece of all your ancillaries. Sponsorships. Everything. Royalty as well, right? Sorry? So you're Royalties, everything. Yeah. 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 Royalties Every, well. every yeah. single thing. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Okay. So, m- the core of our business, even in 2007, mm-hmm. was based around live. Yeah. Bolstered by sponsorship endorsements. Yeah. Why would I give up 25, 24% or I think it was some ridiculous number? Yeah. For no added service, no added value. Yeah. Mm. They just want to take that percentage. So, the label's argument not with you specifically, mm. but is that with we are everyone. marketing you and putting yep. your face on posters all around the town, paying for your videos yep. and giving you tour support. So therefore, all these other brands and all these other shows and all these other things that are coming to you yep. are actually related to the money that we're spending. I that's get, what I get the argument. You know, that's what they're saying. But the only problem I have is when you walk into a deal earning a thousand pound a show, yeah. right? Walking into a deal, right? you have already got a history of making money outside of that, mm-hmm. right? So I don't believe then at that point, it's, it's not like you're coming in cold. Yeah, I get, I get exactly right? where you're coming because from. Because within f- five, six months, Kane's then earning five, ten grand a show. Okay, so maybe that transition period is kind of giving them a little bit of a platform. Yeah. yeah. Right? But then you ask, but where's the added value? Yeah. Are they actively going out there and sourcing those deals. Yeah. That's where I have the issue. If I go and do a deal with, okay, most recently, I've done a, uh, a deal with uh, Under Armour, right, mm-hmm. for an advert, right? I've seen it. That was originally actually a, a celebration of the Joshua Klitschko fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That then they love so much they actually put it on TV in America. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, sick. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, it's a nationwide advert. So, and it's, we're, we're good. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a lovely thing to be a part of. Yeah. It's a different, it's NBA playoffs. Yeah, yeah I saw. Multiples yeah. and millions of people are watching it. So, yeah. and it's a minute long. Yeah. I don't know whether you understand that, but a minute long ad <laughs> in America. In America, <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. So it's a big deal. Anyway, I couldn't see how the record label, not, not in this particular circumstance, because it's, it's effectively more like an acting role. Mm. And it really is. Mm. Um, but I don't see why they should partake in those elements. Mm. Now. Now. Well, I think it's, it's more the fact that when you try to renegotiate something, mm. you're always going to feel a little bit uncomfortable with that because you're going to think, it's like telling a kid for a year, you're getting five pound pocket money. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're going to say, actually, you know, you're going to get two pound fifty this week. Yeah. They're just going to think, but why? Yeah. I didn't do anything different. So I think if you set your stall out from the beginning and you say, look, this is the option we want. We want a 360 deal. And, yeah. you know, you can say yay or nay, you know, but you know what you're getting into from the Indeed. start. I think to try to renege something in the middle of a contract or, or just just And that's, that's where that could that's, be a big problem. And, 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 and you know what? That was the problem. If they'd done this, which was, which was they knew that they had the option coming up. Yeah. Right? You've been there before. You're up against a deadline, right? You know there's going to be a point when you're out of it. Yeah, they had to make their position known. Yeah, I made my position known. Yeah, it was bad timing because it was only one single deep into the new album. Yeah, the minute I say I don't want to work with you, they're like, "All right, cool. Step we don't. Back. We ain't spending no more money on this yeah, yeah, yeah. current campaign." And that's kind of what is that kind, kind of, of what happened up. with it, London Town a bit? Yeah, it, and, and you know we sold. No, it's, it's a silver record. Yeah. Right? Which, 60,000 you know, plus. Yeah. yeah we, we, um, and we had, our, at that point, our highest single, our highest album. It's, <coughs> it's all going in the right direction. Everyone's like, oh, we're easy going to do 150 <coughs> on this. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And everyone was like, look, we've got like this single, that single, da-da. Look, got a whole 
and it finished. And it's funny because these are the things that you would never know, you know, looking from the outside in. I didn't know the politics. No, Actually, as I you say it, I, it makes a lot of sense. I why would, knew why would the go- negotiations happen after? If you're because, fully... Because, if, because Warner bought the label that they were signed to. Yeah, so but therefore... They wanted they to change the terms of straight of, away. The contract. So, but straight there was away. Why, so why would they, own, they own they own six seven nine and Warner's were a partnership. It's a, it's, it's, it's a JV joint venture. Yeah. So they own whatever it is fifty one percent. The other one owns forty nine percent. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> then what you've got is Nick selling out the remainder of his thing. They then go right. Okay. How do we cut corners? How do we squeeze these deals? Mm. And, 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 and I'm, not, I'm not feeling like we were, we were targeted, like we were the only act. Mm. This well, happened, there was, there this, must have been a bunch of acts. That, oh, that. no, it was everyone. It was the roster. Mm. Yeah. So it was us. Like we, we, we were put in the same category as Hard Fire, Paolo Nettini. Yeah. You know, every, everyone at that point was given the same options. Yeah. Some people are going to be in a little bit more of a bargaining power, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So they can kind of cut their cloth accordingly. But with us... They were like, oh no, we need this, and this is yeah. this is our, and we we're like, well. And was you fully into the album campaign as the? Yeah. Di- oh, mate, that's, yeah. that's done. So yeah, it was. You stood up and you you did what you thought was right. Yeah. For Kane, you know, yeah. and I think like what I've always respected about Rich is that he is not a man to mince his words, right? I've met. Many people along the way have come on the wrong side of Rich, and he's told them where to go. Yeah. Um, I heard. And, you know, I think it's important to, to, to talk about that fact. I think as human beings, it's like you never want to, like, you never want to be the stick in the mud or the person to be mm. like, look, that's not going to run like that. But actually, as a manager, fundamentally, you've got to have your artists uh, sort of uh, their affairs first and foremost. You know, mm. you are there to fight for them. You are there sometimes to be the bad guy. 100%. You know? 100%. I've, I've, I've believed from day one... I've always been a bad guy. And I don't mind people giving me a load of shit. If, that, if that's, you know, if mm. I've got to take the flak, yeah. I don't mind taking the flak. Mm. I take the flak from the artist, that's cool. I take, yeah. the flak from, oh, I take the flak from wherever it comes from. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's kind of what you're meant to kind of half do. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know, it, it's, it's nice doing all the nice bits, yeah. but you also understand that there's always going to be these problematic things that pop up. Yeah. And you've got to deal with them and work for them Best as possible. Yeah. Kane is very, I think he's, for most part, he's pretty understanding. Mm-hmm. But what leads him, which makes my job easier, is because he only believes in the creative first. Mm. The deal or the, the, the other freely bits yeah. come second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that, and, and, and that makes my job, believe it or not, easier. Yeah. Because I know what I'm dealing with. And that's why I know that I can talk for him on his behalf no, and, 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 and know most of the time. Actually, I know Kane ain't gonna do this. Yeah. So let's not have, let's let's not waste each other's time on this. Yeah. Tell me what the deal is. Give me your best position, and I'll tell you whether I think it's gonna work. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you should hear the record. Yeah. Listen, everything has to be right. So mm. we might as well have this conversation now. Yeah. Because if not, I've got to have three or four more phone calls with you. It's true. And mm. then go. It's true. Oh, do you know what? We ain't doing it anyway. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and people don't like pe- people do the politics and, the, and that whole thing and I'm like well I'm not trying to play the game for anyone else other than my artist yeah. Yeah. and I'm very fortunate that because Kane has quite a a, a varied selection of things that he can do mm. um, it's enough to keep me busy mm. Mm. so I'm very um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a very good place where I'm not trying to kind of have like a, a whole roster of artists mm. yeah, yeah, where, yeah. where they're all vying for for, for, for similar things, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only got a fight for one person. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, this yeah. is it. But guess what? Once upon a time, I got a phone call from Rich when I was a young, young buck, and I was in trouble with Rich. What happened? You weren't really. I wasn't really. It, but was, it weren't your but, fault. But, but it but, weren't your fault. You know what? It was a. You're good, in a cold face. It was a good learning curve for me, in terms of just like knowing that you got to have your ducks in order when wow. you're putting out a record so the for, for people that didn't know strider man was the first tinchy record that i signed as a single and tinchy had been since obviously had a relationship with kano but kano taking him on tour and they really struck it off yeah. obviously kano was working with fraser t mm-hmm. from the from the get-go yep. and uh via that relationship 
Tinchy went to work with Fraser T. Smith. Yep. Striderman record. If you listen to it when I say this, you will hear it. Kano wrote the hook yeah. to that record. Now, that record came into Ireland. What year was and this, by that the was way? 2000. And oh, nine. Wait, I think nine. Nine. No, no, nine. No, it was 2008. It was 2008. Was it eight? Was it eight? Yeah. Okay. 2008. Uh, and listen, out. the process That's happened very quickly. The record, I've been talking to Tinchy for a long time anyway, and then this record popped up and, you know, Jack and Archie being the ambitious young guys that they were, had, you know, put some money down for Radio Plugger, records on Radio One, it's not signed. We've been talking for like nearly a year, signed a record, now it's just out. But, you know, you got you got to get things in order on the back end. So in terms of label copy and writer splits and that, I mean, I, I can't remember the exact detail, but it was something around the fact that, you know, Kano had contributed to this record as a writer. Yeah. Um, the record was, okay, it was unsigned for a minute and then it was just signed and it was on the radio and it was on Island Records and we hadn't, we hadn't spoken. And I, don't, I think it was a credit thing or... It might have been, I can't, I can't remember. So basically you fucked up. Oversight. Okay. <laughs> Oversight. You know. People do it. It happens. Fair. Yeah, fair. It, happens. Yeah. it happens. It happens. It happens. I was young. Yeah, but I went to meet Rich in Notting Hill. Uh, in a, in a, in a Holland Park. In, in Holland Park, in a Starbucks. Yeah, we in the did corner in yep. Holland Park. Yep. Was Kane there? I think Kane was there. Kane might have stuck his head in for a minute because OJK was, was around the corner. Yeah, I yeah, think Kane was mate. there, so yeah. I was doubly under pressure. <laughs> but to be fair, to, to be fair, like, and I'll, and I'll say this, like, sometimes you, gen, like, you make a mistake that you didn't even know that you made. Like, yeah. I didn't even know I was supposed to do that thing there. So yeah. all I can do is say, like, I actually didn't even know, but how can we work this out? Yeah. You know? Um, and uh, Rich was very straight talking, but he was, you know, he was cool. Because I weren't here trying to, oh, nah, like fight it and yeah. make out like... Not, not for one yeah, second. Like you, you know, no, you, you, no, you, you it, weren't, right. it, it weren't even like that. It yeah. weren't like we were at war with each other. Nah, it yeah, was cool. Yeah. Um, and and, and, and I, 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 I'll give you a little bit more slack. To be fair, it was really Jack and Archie's fault. Okay. Because really, for me... I'm doing my job. Yeah. The artist manager should be doing their job. Okay. I know it's your business partner. Let's that, throw him uh, under the bus. Yeah, you can do that. It feels all right. <laughs> That's the reality. He's yeah. never made that mistake again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell you that. But no, but it was good because it was like, for me, it was like, you know, I'm diving in the deep end. Okay, you want to be the say and r person. You want to not be the assistant anymore. You're going to have to have... These are the things potentially gonna, difficult mm, conversations yeah, yeah. sometimes, mm. and you know, like that was that was what it was. But you know, from 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 there on in, it's like I've always looked at Rich and thought, wow, like it is a rare thing for somebody to really, you know, have that relationship with an artist that he, that he has with Kane and mm. like ride through mm. all of the different things that you've been through, you know, and. And at that time, we, again, going back to the conversation that we had on the phone prior to doing this interview, you know, we spoke about the period in 2009 and 10 where it was like, Tinchy's coming, Chip's coming, Tiny's coming, and off the back of that, Wretch is coming. And all of this time... You forget something. It's very important. Okay, come. End-ups. End-ups, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know, Kane co-wrote some stuff for them. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. But this Strong is what, again. I'm, this is right. what yeah. I'm getting to. Yeah. Oh, this is what okay. I'm getting to. Oh, okay. So we're going through this period <laughs> okay. of artists releasing records and yeah. I'm thinking... So Kane's like, playing a part of this as well, but yeah, really but behind the scenes. he's playing a part as a writer behind yeah. the scenes, which is, again, something that was very forward thinking mm. because just to even have the demeanour to be in a studio session and make another artist feel comfortable enough to, to, to sing or rap something that you've written... That's not easy. A hunt, listen. That's not easy. Ben, you know, because I, I know how hard that is. I've seen it. And, yeah. and, and, and you've got to be a big man to go, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do this. Like, that's good. That's why I, I, I do actually have a load of respect for Tinchy, mm. the way he let his yeah. self develop. Yeah. Some people can't do that. Kane yeah. couldn't do that. Yeah. Mm. Kane can do it for other people. Yeah. But he can't do it for himself. No, what? No, like, he's like, nah. Like, and, I ain't doing that. But so, so, you know, so behind the scenes, Kane is writing, Kane is doing what he's doing. However, you know, on the, on the artist front and at the, and at the, at the coal face of it, it's mm. like, I was sitting there thinking, where's Kane? Why he could, he could just easily come and make one of these records and just put a big hook on it. And 
like I was, I, I went through a couple of years of just thinking, like, why? I mean, you even had a conversation, we like, kind of little, like, we, we, we had a couple of little conversations. Uh, the funny thing is, I met, I think we had a conversation, and then Kano come to Sam, mm. and he played like this must be like I don't know, eleven maybe. I don't well, know, Sam's but he played studio, a bunch of records, you mm. know, and and. You know, because I've I've not got a, I don't have a relationship with Kane where like I don't talk to him on the phone. I don't even mm. have his number, but mm. like at one or two periods mm. in life, like yeah. we've sat down and he's played me music yeah. and whatever, and it's like, you know. But I was always feeling at that point like fuck, like all this, all of this food is over here, and Kano could be sitting on top of that pile, and I couldn't understand why. Where is he? Why is he not just doing one of these records that he could do in his sleep and just go and tour and be the man? You know. Like, so over to you, Rich. What uh, was going on? He, he, he could have. That's a simple answer. Yeah, he, he could have. He chose not to. Um, like you said, end up Tinchy, Chip, uh, Diz when he switched it up. Yeah. Uh, even, tiny. Even even Wiley, like, even Skepta. It, it skepta people up, were trying Wiley, to do these things. Like, they, they all had their big moments. Yeah. One... One thing that he was like, oh, really, and, and and he kind of, I could I could tell it was a frustration because he's looking at these people going, they're getting their moment, but it, on what basis? Kane doesn't want to be that kind of artist. Yeah. So it's quite hard to make that work. What ended up happening was, I think after kind of lots of to and fro and making one kind of record, then made another kind of record. Mm, mm, mm. In that period, yeah. leading up to 2010, which was Method in the Madness, because yeah. that record really wasn't the record that we started back in 2008. Yeah, it was a complete different type of record. Because um, he was coming off the back of one 40, 40 grams. Yeah. yeah, so that was like that was just straight up. Because he's yeah. got the other was, way. This was, he's got yeah, the other that way. That was when yeah. obviously people were like, as but, you lot were saying, were having their moment. But in 2009, I think, you know. There's one record in our catalogue that I, I look back at and it's a, it's a love or hate record, right? And that's a record called Rock and Roller where mm. oh, he's yeah. kind of tiptoed into it, got slaughtered by a load of people mm. and got loved by a load of people. Mm. And it was very strange in what quarters <coughs> it did get love. <coughs> and and, and, and it, was, it was obviously touching a different audience. Yeah. But it wasn't... It wasn't comfortable. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a nice feeling. But this is the thing. It was it, definitely it, a bit of conforming going on. It. 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 Ha it's natural that it. It has to have been tempting to think. Of course. I would like a number one. Yeah. yeah I indeed. would like to. I would like to have a hit. Sharing album that again. all that success of right. yeah, everyone yeah. else. Yeah. Everything shining the of all of right that. now. Mm. Everyone's yeah. doing a stage show now. Everyone's rolling out a live band now. Mm. You know, and doing bigger Which venues. We've been doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. But you know, it's all of a sudden. It's, it's the UK scene is 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 glamorous now, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it 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 has to be tempting. It's you've got to be ridiculously. I, I, I get it. I totally get. You know, it. I totally get. It. So, but what, what were, were there debates at that time? Were there you know? Was there frustrations at that frus time? Frustration. Were there questions. Fr you know, yeah, I think there, I think there's probably a lot a, a lot of unanswered questions. Yeah. But actually, what what we ended up seeing was. And do you know what? All of them other artists we just talked about, like, all praise to them for having that success at that time. Yeah. But Kane really wasn't that bothered deep down mm. because what it ended up becoming was more conversation, who's got the next number one? Not about who's made the it's best true. record. Yeah, who's, yeah, yeah. Because Kane was still considered a sick MC, Indeed. irrespective of all of that. He's, you know, it's his favourite word. Like, mm. he is... He about everyone. Yeah. Like he won't check. Like he, I, I, I watch him check for people, but he's like, okay, you done one. Now you got to do it again. Mm. Okay, do it again. And if you don't do it two, three times mm. in a row, mm. he's not going to give you the time he's of day. Of course not. Of course not. But it's like you know, uh, like Wretch, for example. Yeah. I remember when Wretch was like not on. Yeah. And 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 it was almost like, in fact, Scorcher was kind of out of that camp. Yep sort of more like teed up for a moment. Yep. Do you get what I'm saying? And yep. obviously like Devlin had had his deal yep. and whatever. Mm -hmm. 
And I was thinking like, right, like what's going on with Wretch? And then Wretch did come through and mm. it was like, oh, f like I couldn't picture how he was going to do it, but then he just did it and then it just made so much sense. Do you know what I mean? But you're just thinking like lyrically, you know, we know who are up on the pedestal mm. in this country. Wretch you know? and Zeon. Yeah. If I'm completely honest. Yeah. Was at a moment when I needed them the most to do something. Even though they don't know this. And me, me and Zeon obviously talk. Me and Wretch talk. But what they don't realise is they were what I needed on a personal level yeah. to be reinvigorated that someone can actually do right. something quality lyrically mm -hmm. yes. and be a commercial success. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. They moved, he they gave me, them. both of them, because you... Okay, Wretch is, Wretch is doing his thing. Yeah. But Z to implement it and, and work it and make it happen... I, I remember speaking to her, I said, like I said, you give me the lease of life. Mm. Mm. You really instilled some, and, he, and, and he's like, no, nah, but you're the guy. Like you do, like da, da, da. And I'm like, no, 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 mm. you're the guy. Mm. Like if you're doing this for me, mm. right? I said, I feel like re-energized. Mm. Yeah. I said, but that ain't changing the record we're going to make mm. because we went and put out a record that was so far left in some people's minds yeah. that they were like, What's Kane doing? Yeah, because I felt like that <laughs> amongst the time. Because when Kane did Spaceships with Chase and Status, yep. it felt very far yeah. from what we knew sure. Kane was or was as a person and as an MC. Do you mm. know what I mean? Do you feel as well amongst that time there might have been a bit of a disconnect between, you know, like people that genuinely liked Kane and where he was coming from and what he was doing? Especially, you know, him coming from coming off the back of 140 Grime Street where he was still saying, you know what, I ain't really trying to do all of this yeah. stuff. But then then trying to do this stuff, do you feel like there was a bit of a disconnect between people that checked for Kane then around Method to the Madness or no? Um, it's not as easy as, 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 as saying yes or no to that question. The reason why, if you're talking about disconnect... There's probably a disconnect slightly on the street level. Okay? That's that that in student and the kind of more sort of everyday Joe world, no. Yeah. That's the reality. Because we were still like if if I showed you our touring accounts for 2009, 2010, 2011, you you'd be really surprised. Because we had solid, solid years. Mm. Like solid years. Because we were just still doing what we were doing. The um, the kind of disconnect question. I, I think Kane's always going to be that guy above or beyond the curve. Mm. He ain't never going to be the most fashionable thing. But I tell you what, I don't want to be the most fashionable mm. thing. Because fashions come and go. Mm. We're always present. We are. Whether you like that or not, whether people disagree with that statement, we're always here, but we're always doing something else. Mm. Don't have to be, you know, just that hot thing. Yeah. We're 13 years deep. It's quite hard to invent yourself every time, time Listen. and time again. <laughs> you know. Ridiculous. There's it's, it's certain moments you get. We've had, arguably, I think we've had like three peaks. I mean, that are monumental. Mm. You know? One at the beginning, one at Top Boy, yeah. mm -hmm. and one again recently for music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, like that's 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 what it is. We've always made a living. Yeah, but but peaks. I mean, real peaks. Yeah, the living thing is interesting because people from the outset we were talking like off mic about perception and stuff here, yeah? mm. and you know, like from somebody or from people that are not personally in the camp. Yep. but are maybe a fan of what that camp is providing. Mm -hmm. When that camp, from a perception point of view, mm -hmm. goes quiet, mm. people, music lovers, <clears throat> and people that are in and amongst, a, you know, a certain industry or whatever it is, start asking questions like, rah, like, how, how, how are these men eating? Like, what are they, there's nothing really happening. Like, what's going on? How do how are you surviving? Okay, Mercedes advert. Yeah, I know. And that was, do you know what? That's funny that you even say that. Because um, I remember we, thinking, where's Kane? And then I was watching X Factor. 
and final, that's when I saw nonetheless. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And that's when I saw the Mercedes. <laughs> and, 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 another advert, COI, which people seem to forget about, but it had one. It had second highest rating for that whole What's year. COI was that? Central Office of Information. We did we did something with um, civil servants. Yeah. It was an advert. You can look it on. It's called. It was a song that we did with Noisier called More Than One oh, Way. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we done a whole advert for it for higher education. Yeah. Right. You look it up. Things like that that people don't acknowledge. So was you using your initiative in the sense of, all right, cool. Right now, music's changing. We're yep. still trying to figure certain things out. Yep. Things out, Like, all right, boom, how can we try and make some money other, other ways? Or did it just approach you? With regards to the adverts? Yeah, just with um, regards to the other actually, stuff. Actually, we, we were always on the tout and trying to sort of put ourselves out there for things that were not the obvious. Yeah. That particular one, the COI, worked. That's it. it. You know, certain things align. Great. Mm. Mercedes advert, that's a very, very different conversation altogether because you have three parts to the, the essential makeup of, a, of, a, of an advert. You've got the client, which is obviously Mercedes. You've got the agency, which was BBDO. And then you have the production companies that pitch for the job. BBDO is one of the biggest agencies in the world. Look it up. You'll see what they're about. They're dealing with governments, to Zanussi, to Mercedes, to all manner of household things. Um, they uh, yeah, let me get. They wanted Will I Am. Hmm. Okay, that's what they wanted. They wanted Will I Am. Mercedes. Pre kind of real relationship, I think starting, they were then just started talking to Tiny. Yeah, they knew they knew about Tiny. Tiny, I think, may have been getting some cars off him. I don't know. There, there was there was there was obviously a relationship being built. This was before Tiny did his thing after us, but this was this was early early days. Um, two production companies that went in picture the job, in. Separately, mind you, so this is uh, a, a coincidence, at least. One of them was Yann Demarge, who was the director on the first season of Top Boy. Second one is a good friend of ours called Adam Smith, who is a director in his own right, does lots of stuff with Chemical Brothers, had a few features out, mm. but done a lot of the early Mike Skinner videos, he's done yeah. stuff for us and blah, blah, blah. He's, a, he's, a, he's a, again, he's an old friend of mine from Fat Cat Days. So we've got two people, imagine this, we've got two people pitching on the same job. Mm -hmm. Two people pitching on the same job that don't know they're going up for the same gig. Mm -hmm. They both said they don't like Will I Am because he was basically, it would have been basically an advert about Will I Am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? It wouldn't have been about Mercedes. Yeah. Um, they wanted someone that was slightly more understated, but someone that was known, but had a presence. Yeah. So, from what I understand, the brand went, what about Tiny? And they were like, uh, yeah, it could work, could work, could work. And then on the same, like, in the same period of time, both production companies went up. They went, so, like, who would you like? Like, well, we want someone that's not just got a presence, but someone that can act. At the end of the day, this is an advert. We need someone that understands the process of how this really works. It's like, okay, fine. Went in. Um, miraculously, both from Sid Kano. Oh, sick. And they were like, the, the head of marketing for, or the director of marketing for Mercedes went, who is this guy? This is where it gets really spooky. Because he turned around and he went, gosh, it's a Kano, Kano, let me look it up. Don't know who he is, right? He went, oh, he was in a, was in a um, TV programme last year called Top Wear. <coughs> so I, oh, the only thing he'd watched on TV mm. the whole year was Top Boy. Mm. <laughs> Bam. It just can't, sometimes it just, yeah. there's just a synergy and it was just meant to happen. Yeah, yeah. And then when we sat down and we started having a conversation, we made the deal really workable for everyone. Yeah. So what car are you driving, Rich? <laughs> VW. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only because, if I'm completely honest, over the years, they've actually yeah, we can sort out a car, sort out a car. Kane has drove nothing but a Mercedes. Yeah, since since yeah, okay, yeah. love that. Big up Mercedes. Big up David George. So I've just uh, 
put you on flames. <laughs> there you go. I might send them an email <laughs> so they can pattern up David, David dot George at Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> coming for you, mate. I'm coming for you. Um, yeah, so look, let's talk about Top Boy because, yes. you know, that, that transitions quite nicely into what for me is the pinnacle of representation to this day of, 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 of our scene, our culture, our world. Like, you know, you've had a lot of films in the States that have been, you know, often written by young black people mm -hmm. um, and proper budget has been put behind them and they have stood the test of time from, you know, Boys in the Hood, Menace of Society, whatever. There's many films I could name in America. Yeah. Over here, honestly, like there's been some films that have come out that have been okay. But I think Top Boy is the most true to life, believable and most well shot uh, sort of, uh, well, series, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. um, to date. You know, how did that all come about? Uh, do, uh, do you know what? From day one, 2004, even before we put the album out, Kane had actually been getting touted for, for mm. films. Mm. I would get scripts sent to me like from the get-go. Because he did Rolling with the Nines yeah. as well. He did, but that was more of a, a, a friend thing for Picky. And yeah, that yeah. weren't really kind of saying that we kind of went out of our way to do. That was a, that was a favour to him. Yeah, yeah, but other yeah. than that, everything else we passed on. Yeah. I don't want to start bad mouthing or sort of dissing anyone but I've not liked any of those programs that have come out that have represented street culture mm. Mm. none of them mm. not one of them mm. and I'm, I'm just real it's not it, it just it, it's, it, I'm it's kind of with you I'm, I'm, yeah, kind I'm, with like, I'm literally like, trying to think like of I don't feel like you're, you're told a... to support something yeah. right, because you're doing the right thing yeah. by the culture yeah. Yeah. but you don't do that anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Well, if like, it's rubbish, it it's rubbish. Is it quality or not? I, I said yeah, this yeah. to you like at the beginning yeah. about music. Is it yeah. good or bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Don't like. Let's not pretend something's good. Yeah. Because we feel like we might get ostracised because yeah. we're not doing the right thing. Yeah. Right. I don't think there's a problem with like, uh, particularly pushing the idea if it sounds good. But if it doesn't, if it if the end product isn't good, we don't have to pretend like it was great. I because see people all the time, half stepping. Going, oh, no, no, support it, support it, support it. And I'm just thinking, no, because I know you've got half decent taste. I get confused with just little things that is like, a lot of things for me come down to like a script and I'm like, no one would say that. Like, yeah, yeah, no one would you. ever say yeah. that. And yeah. the thing is like, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm like, that is important. Like, obviously, fundamentally important. Like today and, you know, even in the last few years, like you, you've got to be able to write in a way that is just believable or at least give the actors the creative license to take the basis of what you're trying to say. And, and that's, do it that, that's exactly what Ashley and Kane get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There they, you go. They, they're very fundamental in terms of the the vocal in yeah. what, what is coming out. Yeah. You know, it isn't just script writer going, yeah, yeah, you got to say this. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I know when they done the first couple of sessions and they sat down and went, Kane's like... I ain't saying that. Saying that yeah, yeah. Ain't you never wouldn't say, say that. that. And you just wouldn't say that. Yeah. You know, and there's certain things where, you yeah. know, maybe they just come off a job or they shot someone or, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. The, and and then they go and do something. You go, <laughs> you ain't doing that. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that ain't happening. Yeah. And so there's a, there is a little bit more uh, artistic license. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they, yeah, they're, 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 they've got, they've definitely got more freedom. They definitely had that with, with Yan. Ronan, the writer, yeah. is not a black man. He's yeah. Irish, yeah. right? He's lived in Hackney most of his life. But you want to read a story about someone? Yeah. Read his story. Yeah. Know about him. And then, you know, mm. I see people being, oh, appropriation this, appropriation that. Is it good? What, for um, Top Boy? Yeah. That's mad to me. Well, because it's written by a white man. Oh, fair, yeah, fair but, play. But do you know what? The product was <laughs> good. Yeah. And That's I why I didn't I even look at it. If yeah. the product wasn't good... Then yeah. it becomes a whole different conversation, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, that, and and I think that's the the bottom line. Is it good? Yeah. Is it good? So, Regardless of where it's coming from, is it good? Yeah. And I don't think that he ever came out and tried to do this whole thing of hey everybody, this is me. I wrote this and no, I. No, did no, no. He's no, very just, much. He's pretty much behind the scenes, isn't yeah, he? I think, yeah, like. indeed. So, so how do you you know you know the music business back to front, inside mm. out? Like you know you could read you could read a contract upside down in the dark, but. You know, you're stepping into the film game. It's a different thing. I can read a script. 
Okay, <laughs> you can read a script, but how do you? I can, I can, I can. T- I feel like I, I love my, I love my film and TV. I really do. I'm, I'm quite a, I guess a fairly big addict of watching films and TV. Yeah. My missus will tell you, I'm up until two for every morning watching TV or films because I'm just trying to take in as much information mm, as possible. Mm, mm, mm. Um, and I know when there's a good script. And, and, and I think we've dodged quite a few. Mm. Yeah. And they're all the obvious ones. They don't need to be mentioned, right? But how does... What I'm intrigued about is the business of film. Like, how do you okay, that, set a price? Okay. Like, I don't even it's, know how this quite, works. It's something... That even now, mm. and with things that I'm still doing, mm. I'm still understanding how deals can work at different levels. Mm. Because... Some there's you know a set fee, and you get oh you get a set amount of money mm. for that show, that scene, that episode. Um, but now we are in a very different atmosphere. Because I'm thinking like, and you know, not not to go into the numbers, but yeah. it's like a Mercedes advert. Yeah, the budget must just be insane. You know, properly. And I guess yeah. they are. You know, they they are really going to have to pay you to do that advert. Correct. Yeah, it's Mercedes and it's a yeah. prestige brand, but yeah. like really, like oh, you us. know, you got yeah. to be paid for that yeah, because you, you know you can directly see what they're going to get from the back of that. Of and they course. were, you know, trying to promote, I guess, the A class or whatever. Well, the, the whole the idea whole. behind the advert was they 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 looked at VW, they looked at Audi, they looked at um, BM probably, and yeah, yeah. and and they realised that everyone below, you know, yeah, they didn't have any young people was was was, was, was a young urbanite, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. It's black, white, Asian, yeah. doesn't matter, yeah, right. When you think of Mercedes, mm. what do you think of first of all? Yeah, you think of success. 40, 45 you think year of, old white guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they just didn't want that obvious yeah. connotation, so they were trying to. So we, when they told us what they were trying to do, what they were trying to achieve. I'm like, well, you're talking to us for a reason. Mm. We have credence mm. on a music level, mm. right? We can act. So we're going to deliver you the job. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Mm. Do I know I can deliver this? Yes. Mm. Um, but you, you was going to say, so Mercedes, you know, yeah, they must, yeah, you yeah. must be paid a lot of money, but then you might read a script like Top Boy mm. and understand that, and I don't know, but yeah. maybe the production budget for like for all of this cast. <laughs> yeah combined yeah. might not even match up to what Mercedes it have didn't. spent on a marketing it campaign just for that it, X Factor ad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It didn't. So yeah, and you're totally right. But but what, what what you've got is you've got with us, this was uh twenty ten. Yeah. Uh we'd had a, we'd actually had a great year because not only did we put out Myth to the Madness, which actually has sold about thirty thousand copies. Yeah. Which independently I'm, I'll, I'll take all day long. Of course. Considering it's not a record that, you know. How much was it? About seven pound. Uh, Just some maths. Might, might have been a little bit more than that. Just did a bit of maths. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> we, you know, no. So you know, we, we put that out. We toured. Yeah. Came was on the road for the whole of the year with Gorillas, Plastic yeah. Beach. Oh yeah. So that generated a, a, a fair amount of income. Got to tour the world. That was great. Yeah. Um, and then this script come in, and. I, it, it's a really long story, but I try and make it as condensed as possible. Um, there was a, a, an agent, a film agent that we were talking to, um, who actually is the agent for Ray Winston. Mm-hmm. And I'm a massive Ray Winston fan. So You was, look like you should know Ray personally. <laughs> <laughs> I've met him a couple of times, funny you enough. You must know him, but, but come on, Rich. No, I, 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 I've, I've met him in, in various scenarios, but he looks after him. I was like, look, let's talk. It's a, about Kane looking for an acting agent, but we want to do someone who gets gets what we're about. It's like, okay, cool. He then, strangely enough, introduces us into a casting director by the name of Des Hamilton. Look him up. He's got a ridiculous show reel. He's a, and he's a lovely guy, a Scottish guy. Rich has dropped a lot of gems, and he's right. been very, very generous with the names when, today. When, when, <laughs> when, when, you, when we met him... Him and Kane got on like house on fire. Mm. They went and done the first. When did they do it? I'm trying to think when they would have done that first. That first scene would have been must must have been in. Tw- must have been early 2011. Mm. 
it must because I don't think it was 2010. Mm. So it went along. They don't did the um, did came along when did his thing. Met the director. No, actually met the casting director. Obviously, they were like, I'm in an R in. Read through some lines. Blah blah blah. You know, you know. Not not. I don't think they were quite sure. Went away. Come back again. Kane's like, I ain't going no more after this time. Like, I'm not going to see these guys again. Like, this, this second time, I'm not going. If I ain't got the job, I'm, you know, because yeah. this is casting. This, this, is, this is proper casting. This is how it mm. works. Mm. You don't necessarily, just because they've asked you to come in and, and do the casting, doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you've got the job. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, right, okay. So I said, all right, all right. Trying to manage that expectation because I don't really want him to do too much work and it not be fruitful. Okay, cool went along they're like yeah we really really like him but we're just still not sure need to bring some other people so then i'm like kane i want you to go and do it okay he's like, oh, I, really i've got to go and do this again and now he's getting pissed off and i'm thinking <laughs> oh, this is my idea as well like, i've pushed this mm. like this is my like this is <coughs> even though this is delivered to i'm like i was like no nah, this is really good mm. like we should do this like, this is the one that we should do and then when he read, he was like, yeah, do you know what? Actually, he, he totally got it. Mm. But I was the one, ultimately, I know, pushing for that to happen. Then we, um, we had to go back a third time. He agreed to go and do it a third time, All right? But this time, he then had to, and I, I, hope, I hope I'm right in this. I hope we didn't go back a fourth time. I think we were back a fourth time to do something else. But I think on the third time, they turned around and went, yeah, we don't want you to play that character. That character was the Shane. Mm. Okay. Kane was playing the Shane. Okay. Because Sully mm. was actually an Asian guy. Mm. That's what the script was. Mm. But they turned around to him and went, "Can you, you know, can you play mad? Like not not like, not mad like lunatic, like mm. mad like crazy, like mm. in people's face. Can you do it?" So like, yeah, maybe. Des said to me afterwards, he said, I never seen someone like he's such a chameleon from this really quiet, you know, considered person mm. who was kind of playing it quite down with the shame. Da, da, da. He just flipped yeah. frame chairs around in the casting, <laughs> da, da, just going like absolutely batshit crazy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like l lost it. And they were like, Fully got into character, boy, yeah, and that was Sully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you, what you saw, you saw Sully go from this kind of meek, not meek, but understated, quiet character. Yeah. To one hundred in seconds. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then that's what they tried to get across. You know, you see sort of softer moments with him, mm. him with his kid, then he's yeah blazing someone down. And yeah, yeah. Nah, Very crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm gonna crazy. watch that again. Actually, I, I actually watched I it again recently. Did you? Yeah. Just out of interest. Well, how how recent? This year? Recently. Yeah, yeah. Like Is literally, it, yeah? like last I, month. I, I've actually watched it. Because you know it. what? Like, Has it aged well? Like? Yeah. Because when I watched it before, you was watching it week after week after week. Yeah. But that, now yeah. it's just on Netflix four in a row. Yeah. Okay. I'm using your account, by the way. Oh yeah, I know. I've noticed. Shout out to Netflix. He's, he's, I swear you added like two account. There's like two in it. You got like one a for the kids, kids. account. There's like, <laughs> you know what I mean, you freed up the password. What did he expect? So. Let's 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 bring it to now. Let's bring it to today. You were far from you were far from them not busy like then really when yeah, I think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. So busy. all this time when we, we this us. time when everyone's thinking you're cold, peas must be low. Yeah, and what how are you eating? Mm -hmm. How are bills getting paid? You have still managed to be able to find other things. Yeah. To generate. Yeah, there is. And, and don't get me wrong, like, no one was retiring off of season one and no, two. No, of course not. Yeah. Don't of course get me not. wrong. Nah, but the Mercedes advert, the Gorilla Tour, all of these things help to just Indeed. top up the, the thing. And, so, and, and, that's, and that's what gives you the freedom for Kane to go away, write a record, yeah. bin it, because that's essentially what he did do. Mm -hmm. He binned it, he didn't thought it was right. Then we went away, started writing again. Then we got back in with. Uh, phrase again, obviously. Who produced New Banger? Melee. Okay, all right. Yeah. There was cut of, most of the records. If you have a look at our body, there's always like two, three kind of permanent members. Yeah. 
with guest slots yeah, yeah, on the yeah. productions. Okay. Just to kind of get some of them different flavours come across. Now, with, with, with this record, it's like Kane just wanted to make the backbone of the record, as he always does. So that's why Mikey, Fraser, yeah. it, Fraser obviously being a major part of it, and then, and then Blue coming in, and then Blue kind of tidied the whole thing up, brought it together. We, yeah. were, we were deliberating on the part of... We would... I do another podcast, yeah? yeah? And we talk about all different types of stuff. But Kane has come up in this podcast a few times. On I know he has. Where uh, that, that I have listened to because I get people calling me. Yeah. So we, we had a passionate conversation about his career. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously on one side, it was like, Kano's not back. He's fallen off. There's nothing there. It's not happening or whatever. Um, New Banger came out. Some still weren't fully convinced. Yeah, um, I know. Hale came out. Someone that you share that show with. I yeah, know. yeah. I know. That that Hale came out, still wasn't convinced. I know. Then I got. Remember how 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 come first? How why wasn't they convinced? They just didn't. They, I don't think they liked the record. No. I was I, new banger wasn't for me. But Hale, I was like, you know what? I was saying if he can if if he does live shows, irrespective of whether people know it or not, this is going off. And That's how got, I felt. And you got it. Yeah. And 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 and, and so. We done our job. Yeah, I, I know that. Ain't, I know you're not everyone. Yeah, but you got it. And if one person gets it, cool. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Oh. I get a text message from Mr. Jam. Yeah, and he's like, "I've got a record that I think that you need to hear." Actually, Gary Skank came out and was like, "No, nah, this is a banger." Mm. Then I get a text message from Mr. Jam, and it's like he said, "I got a record that you, I think you need to hear. Mm. I'm going to be playing it on the show today." So I text the guy that I do the podcast with. Yeah. I said, you know what? Jam said, listen to the show at such and such of the time. So we both listened to it. Yeah. And that's when we heard free relapse. Yeah. When we went and did the podcast again. Yeah. Oh my God, Kano's back. <laughs> Kano is but back. But listen, you can't be mad at people for not always seeing the vision at the start. Because nah, you know what? If I, everyone could see my it, mouth. I get it. If everyone could see it, then uh, we wouldn't have jobs. Indeed. You yeah. know what I mean? Indeed. And that's, that's all right. And I think probably part of the uh, a brilliant part of this job when it comes to working with artists short well long term and developing careers is is being able to like prove people wrong mm -hmm. or not even necessarily just prove people wrong but just like Reminders. see things come to fruition and people mm -hmm. actually start to get it like mm -hmm. I can say like loads of my close friends even Chucks loads of times I've known I'm playing music you know I'm working with this act I know you don't get it mm -hmm. I know you don't get it there are times I know you don't get it. And that's cool. It might not even be for you, even when it's at its height mm -hmm. or whatever. But it is quite a um, satisfying feeling to think, mm. actually, what I believed it, it was. I'll give you a little nugget on free wheel ups. Yeah. When I heard Jamie and Giggs, I ranked Swifter. I had to get his number just straight away because mm. I was like, "This is this is nuts. This mm. is I need, need 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 to get this." Spoke to him. He sent me over uh, like because obviously he he was buzzing because obviously it's Kane. Mm. Mm. But I'm like, don't get it, like don't get it twisted. I just want I want this I want the I want a banger. He sent me so many records. This is a, so that would have been well over a year before that record dropped. Mm. When I got that record, I was like, this is the one. Sent it over to Kane. And I'm talking out of like 30 tracks he sent it over. And that was the only one I picked out. Sent it over and he's like, cool, let's leave that just there. I'll come back to that later. And uh, come back to it. Must have been six, seven months later. He'd obviously wrote some bits. He said, oh, look, I'm just going to let you know. I've asked Wiley to jump on it. And I said, OK, cool. Not a problem. He said, because I'm still waiting for a while. This must have been about a month later. All right, cool. Wicked. He said, you know Will, you know what Will can be like? Mm. Yeah. All right? A little bit. Yeah. Will be in Wiley. So I'm going to get gigs on it instead. Gigs is like that. Machine. Mm. Yeah. Boom. Inbox. Done. Like, just no problem. Same day. Will goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your verse for you. Because Will weren't really going to be on that. Okay. Will was not going to be on that. 
Now, I, I, I do wonder if he'd heard Giggs's verse, would have he still delivered mm. that verse? Mm. It's been quite interesting because arguably, I think that's the feature of last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Knowing Wiley, I think, I think I there's other like... big features, but I think in terms of yeah. verses, I'd probably say no, it was up there. He had, he had, he had, he had yeah. one of those moments. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. massive.